What's up, y'all? I got a banger from the man guide. Let's get straight into it. We'd be good together. do you think? No. Why? Because I'll break your heart. Maybe I'll break yours. Bro, this girl is beat at best. <laughs> Client's trying to date you. Girl, stop. Nobody breaks my heart. Today. You ain't got a heart. Is International Spicy Workers Rights Day. Stupid. What's that mean? That means it's your chance to spoil your local spicy worker. Buy them something off their wish list. Send them a shit ton of money. Spread education. You have the power. Hi, I'm Bro, an spicy workers? What? You're doing corn. You're on OF. What are you talking spicy workers? Why are we trying to make up new terms for words that already exist? You're an online 304. Simple as that. Person SW and I've been so for about 12 years now. For me, like a lot of service industry jobs, some days are great, some days are bad. Like SW. Girl, you're on OnlyFans, stop it. Some days are relatively neutral. For the most part, it's just work and I'd rather be doing this than doing anything else that's accessible to me. It's the one job that accommodates my needs as a person who is chronically ill and unfortunately needs to take a lot of days off to recover or deal with my chronic illness. And the amount that I'm paid relative to the amount of labor that I do helps to compensate for my body just hating me. <laughs> I'm able to live really comfortably, live in a nice apartment in a nice neighborhood, have savings, investments, travel. They will justify being an online 304 so much. I have chronic illnesses and I just can't go to work and I just, she looks able-bodied young. What is she talking about? Get on some medicine, go to the doctor, figure it out, but you don't have to resort to being on OF. This is crazy to me. I want to and have the time and ability to manage living in this human body that I've got. So I do enjoy some aspects of my work, mainly being able to survive this capitalistic hellscape that we call a country. Capitalistic hellscape that we call a country. <laughs> you mean the same country that has simps buying your OF? Shots fired! What are you talking about? What I don't love is the stigma and violence that is oftentimes directed at people like me who turn to this line of work because there aren't many options. Bro, chat, let me know. Are there many options? I think there's very many options. Every time I go to TJ Maxx, Ross, they're always hiring. You just don't want those jobs. The easiest thing in the entire world. If you are wondering how you and another woman got the same man, it is because men are the easiest thing in the entire world. I have never wanted a man and not gotten him. Do you have- She's a runner, she's a track star. I love it when a woman tells, tells about her bop lore. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, Mia. Any idea how many men have wanted me? Many men. And not gotten me? There has never been a single man that I have wanted that I have not gotten because men I downloaded Hinge this year. I've never had a dating app in my life before. And I'm glad because it's terrible. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but so when I do match with someone and someone piques my interest on there, um, I try not to start off the conversation with what do you do because that feels shallow in itself. Um, so but you it's... start with like a gentle sext. You're like, you can know. I send you something weird? <laughs> <laughs> weird. Here's like, my link. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like, subscribe here. <laughs> you can see whatever. Yeah. Oh, God, horrible, dude. Forgive me. I literally woke up like this. Makeup is flaking the fuck off. Um, slept in it. Didn't give a shit. Anyway, I wanted to go on a little rant because I have seen such an uptick in people wanting to create spicy pages. And just spicy pages. Dude, it's OF, bruh. Why are they trying to call it spicy pages? Ladies, you don't have enough seasoning to be spicy. <laughs> You're talking about spicy. I've been in the spicy network for nine years now in that industry. Um, I just want you to know that you need to consider- She's a runner, she's a track star. Nine years, good Lord. Consider everything, and I do mean everything, before starting a spicy page. This shit is not easy, okay? It might be fast money, but it is not easy money, okay? Um, you need to consider who all is going to see it because they will eventually. All right, guys, getting in lingerie, showing your butthole online for four ninety nine. That's not easy, bro. <laughs> it's not easy. OK, so before you start about thinking your start about starting your OF, remember, it's not easy taking your clothes off and taking pictures with a camera. That's not easy work. You know what's not easy work? Laying concrete, being a roofer in July. That's not easy work. This is easy work. 
Um, you need to consider your work ethic, consistency. Hi, I'm Louise. I am a former youth pastor, former science teacher, a former drug user, a current sex worker, and a full-time counselor. Even if someone is- Oh, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You're a full-time sex worker, but you're also a counselor? <laughs> huh? An online personality, it's important That's to- That's like saying I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm highly intelligent, but I'm also very stupid. Stupid? Like, come on. Look at them complexly. I am much more than just a sex worker. I am much more than an addict. So she's a professional degenerate and someone counseling the youth? Bro, this is what I'm saying. Like, what are you really? Yeah, a full-time degen? Come on, honey. Just call a spade a spade. You sell your cheeks online for a couple bucks. For 10 cents a day. <laughs> for 10 cents a day. You can sponsor some OF's, from some OF's girl's failed sex career. That I've kind of created for myself out there in the public. Um, and the more I understand how much further we have to go for sex worker rights, I think I've made a conscious decision that I don't intend to leave until I see some of the um, sex worker rights improve. I don't know how long that's going to take. It might never happen. Maybe I'm going to be a sex worker till I'm 90 and there's nothing wrong with that, but... Uh, there's a lot wrong with that. I heard a, I heard a quote the other day, like, because you know there's a lot of girls out there getting, like, surgery, like BBLs and lip fillers, lip injections, and it's like, what this doctor says, or said is, the more, the more surgery you get, the more surgery you get because you're going to try to fix the problems. It's same it's same way with these corn stars and these OF girls. The more you do it, the more you do it. You get dug further deep in. You don't have any other skill sets besides doing that online. So you're just going to get stuck in that bubble. What else are you practicing? Spreading your cheeks and taking pictures? <laughs> you're not really practicing a skill set. And then you go to another job and show them your resume. You have no work history. You have no requirements or prerequisites for this job. And then also, your entire body is plastered online. That's if you're doing solo stuff. Stuff. But if you got other men in there blowing your back out, like, goodness gracious, can you imagine? And then the shame you're bringing to your family. That's why I always say, like, Jamie, let me see the relationship with her father. Because most of the time, these girls probably do not have a relationship with their father. And if they did, more than likely, they wouldn't be resorting to this. I, I don't see myself leaving anytime soon. There's still a little bit too much work to be done before I leave. The so-called voice she created for herself. Work to be done? What kind of work? Like, the next thing you're going to be is a single mom. Single mom. Like, work to be done? That, I, I'm, I'm just going to keep it a buck, chat. Like, what do you guys think? Do you think this whole OF thing is actual work? I'm sorry, but like, dude, I, I take my clothes off to take a shower, and that's pretty easy to do after a hard day's work. And then taking pictures would not be hard. Uh, I don't know where the work is in any of that. My whole family, and... Ooh, Riley Reed going through it. It sucks. Me for sex. Most modern women will do this, but call it dating. I've lost my whole family, and mm. it sucks. So a lot of times when people ask me if they should do porn, I tell them no. I tell them that. And this is from a corn star. Don't do it. Life really hard. It makes dating really hard. It makes your family life really hard. It makes... Intimacy it hard. makes other men's pens really hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was just an easy shot to take. If you're putting yourself out there and the world is now judging you, you have to be okay with being shamed every day of your life. I don't even want to have children because I do porn because I'm worried of the way that people will treat my child. With me personally, my mom... At least she's smart enough to know that was supportive in the beginning she kind of just let me do whatever that i think it was a good thing i had a lot of freedom as time these moms dude more than likely was a single mom yeah honey go out there get your cheeks busted yeah you know what honey you should go get your uh, your, your spine realigned by a bunch of guys get your back blown out this is why single moms do such a bad job raising children dude i progressed and i became successful I started to feel like my mom was using me so that she could live a more luxurious lifestyle. When I started to set like these boundaries, not giving her money or things like that, it made our relationship a bit more difficult and almost toxic. And so it sucks. I don't have a mom anymore. 
I don't talk to her. I miss having a mom. I feel like you can't rewind and you can't go back. I don't have that relationship with her anymore. I don't ever think I will. And that bums me out. Bums me out a lot. I talked to my dad and he struggles with my, my job being in the industry. Okay, so the dad is there. Guess he didn't give any guidance though. Shame on him. He's also religious. Recently, I wanted to go visit him and he said that I, I can't go visit because his wife, my stepmom, doesn't want me there. I'm not allowed to go visit my dad anymore because my stepmom doesn't like that I do porn. But then he told me that when I was like, can we like go get coffee and like we go like get breakfast? And he's like, I don't want to be seen in public with you. And that just <laughs> hurt so bad. And it's- Oh, look, the consequences of my own actions. It's so hard to feel bad for her. Sucks. I lost my family. I don't talk to like my brothers or sisters. I think that they all kind of like all try for to take bag. advantage of me and stuff, or they're just- like, Take advantage dad. of you. They probably would have actually tried to help you out, but you really just took advantage of yourself. I don't want to be around me. Oh. Where's the accountability? At where's least it at? The pro ho is going to spare. Where's where's the accountability at? Where is it? Chat. Where has it gone? I'm not seeing any of it here. <laughs> and none of that did she say. You know what? I shouldn't have done it. She's like other girls shouldn't shouldn't do it. But she's right. She can't rewind the clock. She can't go back in time. The damage is already done. The ends like back in the day that just got chastised and run off, and it was really terrible. I don't think I would ever run a woman <laughs> off for that. There's a lot of things I've run off for, but I- Wait, sure, wait, wait, I'm what are you talking about? It'd be undone. There's a, like some comedians like back in the day that just got chastised and run off and it was really terrible. I don't think I would ever run a woman <laughs> off for that. There's a lot of things I've run off for, but I sure on a tit- I've uh, dated, yeah, and I've dated guys who were like- oh. Don't be a simp in the simp epidemic. If your girl's willing to show her body in public online, she's for the streets. She's a runner, she's a track star. This, this guy's a simp, clearly. Yeah, that's totally fine, like totally cool. And then a couple months in, they're just like, mm, I don't really like think that, like, why don't you stop? And I'm like, no. Why? Yeah. Because they don't want other people. God, looking at see, the, these guys are like the pick me versions of men. Well, why? Why does it even matter that you're showing your body online? Doesn't matter to me. I'd be there. But these guys are the same ones that are alone. Because that stuff doesn't work. Women. Oh, here's the thing, dude. Women want you to set boundaries. They want you to be firm with them. They want you to have strict rules for what they can do and what they cannot do. They respect that. Let me ask you this. Chat, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you think a woman would respect a man more that uh, if he had a boundary or if there were no boundaries? If he was like, yeah, baby, you can do whatever you want. Go out, get your back blown, get your you know spine realigned, go talk to guys, show your body online. Or would she respect a guy more that says, hey, you can't do that, and I'm not going to date you if you do that. She would respect the guy probably with the boundary. I told Cass once we got in a serious relationship, I'm like, your IG's on private, and that's no questions asked. And she's like, wait, what, really? I'm like, yeah, it's on private, and now it's on private. You can't just go see her page. You have to request a follow, and then if she says, yeah, I mean, she doesn't post, but also that's another thing to look for. If a girl's really on social media all the time, bro, she for the streets, bro. She's a runner, she's a track star. Because she's looking, she's craving validation, but it's so hard to find a woman that doesn't crave validation, because most women just do. But yeah, this dude's a simp. Classic simp. Because I'm now their property in their head. Listen. You know how men, you know how men. To me. Mm-hmm. Men undress your woman anyway when she's walking down the street, whether oh, she's yeah. in Walmart or anyway. Oh, now, God. granted, they didn't That's see. It's not an excuse, dude. It's a whole. Oh, God, what are you gonna? What are you gonna say? Somebody's imagination's a bad thing. It's just. It is what it is, bro. It's what men do. We're pigs. Butt ass naked, but they still yeah, I mean, look I at because I sex the time. Exactly. They're not seeing her as property. But. Bro, yeah. A guy's not seeing you as property. A guy's saying, oh, now you're my responsibility. Now I need to protect you and provide for you. That's that's like a respect thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> He'll say anything and hope she will touch it. For real, though, my dildo. Like, this guy, classic simp, do not act like Nelly a guy like meeting that. meeting 44-year-old Angela, who recently left the glamour world. Got Monroe piercing. Jeez. Behind and now runs a successful clothing line. 
This is how I looked before my plastic surgery. In the last 19 years, oh. Angela has had more than 45 cosmetic procedures Jesus. and spent nearly 50... Like I said, the more work you get, the more work you get. ...thousand pounds in a bid to stay ahead in the glamour 50 industry. 50 grand? I've seen very, very few women be able to successfully um, use the industry towards their benefit. You have to have some kind of plan. Otherwise, you are going to be 40 years old. You are going to have no skills. You, I'm sure you'll be beautiful when you're 40, but you're still going to be a 40-year-old stripper. My stage name was Monique. It got really hard after a while to feel like what everyone wanted me for was my sexuality. Duh! Stupid! Women are marketers and men are salesmen. If you're marketing your sexuality, that's what we're going to buy. That's what you're offering. That You're basically, ladies, you're basically what you do with the way you dress, the way you talk, walk, and all your actions is showcasing your value to a man to say, hey, this is my value, this is the baseline. If you're a stripper, why would I come through and want to respect you more than you're respecting yourself? It makes no sense. Loki, does somebody want to carry it? Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Go to your place. But ladies, why would I want to come in and respect you more than you're respecting yourself? You're you're busting it open on stage. <laughs> why would I want to treat you like a commendable woman when you're not even treating yourself like that? And feeling like no one saw value in me for anything other than that. Who are you really? What is your true self? And I would say that anything that takes you away from that is something to really think about. At least these pro suckers are honest. Yeah, I mean, at least these women are trying to at least talk to each other, maybe hold each other accountable a little bit. But a lot of times, if you've been busting it open online for a while, the damage is already done. My hot take about the sex industry and sex work is that it is really hard. Stupid. And sometimes it is really traumatic. I and agree with I'll, that. Honestly, things don't need to be the way that they are. Like, at all. <laughs> yeah, um, we shouldn't we shouldn't pay for women that are online showing their bodies like in the simp epidemic but i don't feel like sex workers really ever have safe spaces to openly talk about their jobs or the trauma they face or like the violence they possibly endure because people are always trying to rescue us or save us or talk over us have you ever thought that if a bunch of people are trying to help you that maybe you need help stupid just saying, if 50 people call you a crackhead, you're probably smoking crack. <laughs> and so if a bunch of people are reaching out to you to help you, you probably need some help. Uh, or create an inaccess to an industry we literally rely on. Um, or perpetuate more violence and stigma. And Where's all this violence happening? I'm sorry, I'm like, every woman has said this. Is, is are words violence now? Realization. And like... It sucks because at the same time that I'm making videos about my sugar daddy, I also can't talk about the times he's tried to assault me. It's so hard to feel bad for you when you're taking money from this man willingly and you're willingly talking to him. Nobody's making you talk to this guy. It's a dark industry. It comes with dark side effects. Because then people will just be like, well, you can't keep seeing your sugar daddy. And then I'm like, well, yeah, but also I need to keep paying my bills. Go get a job. Stupid. And I think a lot of that also aids to like, people are always like, you guys glamorize and glorify an industry and it's like no we don't no we don't we have to lean into respectability politics and only share certain aspects of this and we're also dealing with stigma and criminalization and fucking censorship that none of y'all bitches want to get in the boat and have a conversation with us about because like you don't think that censorship affects you that's real loud right now that is real loud but like Bro, Every censorship affects everybody. Y'all, I know, I know, <laughs> if y'all only heard back in the day those Halo 2 lobbies, <laughs> or those COD lobbies, bro, people people be thinking some sick and twisted things that they don't be putting online. online. There's censorship everywhere. There's certain things you can't say. Sometimes sex workers do try to hold space and, like, take up space to be like... Bro, chat, let me know. Do you feel bad for women in this industry? Personally, I don't. I really don't. Sometimes this shit isn't great. And it's hard. And X, Y, Z. I'll have my clients being like, is this about me? Do I make you sound? I'll have swerfs and rad fems and just the most ill-intended... Swerfs and rad fem. Bro, these terms getting out of hand, bro. Their fuckers, you know, co-opting the violence I face at work to perpetuate more violence and inaccess to me at work. It's like all the buzzword <sighs> perpetuating violence. I mean, leftists, other feminists whole swaths of like progressive 
groups and motherfuckers like do not want to listen collaborate engage hold space please bangs please and i think it's i think it's annoying Aww. especially when i watch like swerfs and rad femmes like spend so much time reaming against an industry they themselves are not struggling to survive in and like when my legislators spend so much time like conflating sex work with trafficking and it's like we're right here generations of workers are are right here actually um different types of workers doing different types of work i, I mean i gotta agree it has been here a while you know prostitution's been around for a very long time i think that it, selling your body is probably one of the oldest business practices but the thing is is it never has come along alongside with dignity you've never really heard of a lot of honor and respect that is a parallel in this industry. So it's like, yes, you can work in this industry. You can do what you want, but you've got to realize there are sociological ramifications for all the actions that you choose to do. And this is one of those um, ramifications. This is a consequence. And like, I know everyone and their mom has some lukewarm take about like a fucking, but like um, that whore phobia is deep, dude. I mean, there are times I've, like, talked about my job and then motherfuckers be like, just go get a new job. As if so many people are not turning to this line of work to be accommodated in some regard. And I know it's the hypervisibility and the way in which civilians glorify and glamorize this shit. But it's hard. And I wish I could be more honest about the realities of how hard it is without that violence being co-opted or i don't know me losing a whole platform that's hilarious that <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here trying to feel bad for her and be like man i'm really trying to understand her but I, I just can't you chose to bust it online you chose to do that how could i feel bad for the decisions you've made that's why i always say like your past can either be a crutch or a springboard, but it's up to you to what you choose to do with it, right? It can be a springboard. Say, you know what? I'm a reformed, you know, corn star or whatever. I'm not going to do that anymore. But a lot of these girls are just doubling down. They know the damage is done. So it's like, where are you going to go from here? That's powering. Yet you're relying on creepy, disgusting men who think you are disgusting and trash to ironically pay your bills, which is probably the most degrading thing in the entire world. I am normally a support all women girly. It is 2023, but I have no more patience for ignorant women like this constantly slandering, talking down on, and literally speaking over SW. Especially when no, they try no, What you're doing is you're catering to the simps. We know what you're doing. <laughs> we know what you're doing, uh, plump lips. You're, you're making sure that the men feel better because the men are the ones funding your entire lifestyle. Use the guise of feminism to further push their ridiculous point. The second we are brought into this world, we are taught to make ourselves smaller, more obedient. And if we follow this set of rules, which we will later find out we're created by the patriarchy and we should never dare question, we will be rewarded and have amazing... Bro, uh, <laughs> the CEO of OnlyFans is a guy. Fulfilling lies. Misogyny is so deeply ingrained and normalized in our society. If we are not actively working to unlearn fucked up shit yeah, that we have... Yeah, yeah. Misogyny is so ingrained that you can take your clothes off and men will pay you for it. <laughs> misogyny is crazy work. And taught. Internalized misogyny will become so fucking loud. I know some women believe if they side with the oppressor, they echo that same hateful rhetoric. They will be absolved from the abuse, violence, and misogyny of the patriarchy. And sure, in that moment, the men may choose you, but only to further push their hatred and lack of respect for women. At the end of the day, still don't view you as an equal. If given the chance, they would do the exact same things to you they would do to the SWs that you are speaking down on. Whereas actually, if you were in an office, it would be a lot less degrading. You could actually have respect in an office. The same offices are riddled with SA and harassment, ones filled with sexism and unequal pay, same offices that will work you to the fucking ground, ask you for unwavering loyalty and lifelong commitment, steal your ideas as their own, only to fire you the minute you fall ill or get pregnant or are mentally unwell. Why is being an SW one of the only professions where we have think pieces on whether or not it is empowering? Do we ask plumbers if they feel empowered. Do we ask construction workers and professionals. Oh my god, I love it. This is what we call moving the goalpost. These girls that do OF have nothing in congruency with a plumber, an electrician, or a guy that works any other blue collar job outside. Guys <laughs> that are working blue collar are out there busting their butts to make just like a minimum, like a livable wage. Now, plumbers and electricians and those guys that are in those specialties, they can make a lot of money, but like, honey, you're showing your cans on the internet. 
<laughs> guys are simping for you. Your life is not that hard. If you're able to buy this crazy looking gel giraffe leotard or whatever this is, this polka dotted mess and have this wig or your hair colored like you're not the, the patriarchy is doing you pretty solid professional athletes, how they feel selling their body. This is capitalism, bitch. Unless you are the upper echelon 1%, we are all selling our bodies, selling our labor for a fucking check. Choosing your own hour, working remotely, screening your clients, some getting paid exceptionally well. It may not be for you, and that's fine. Mind your fucking business. No one with any level of, like, a brain would ever respect someone who does. Men hate SWs because they have to pay for something they believe they are entitled to. Women hate SWs because men told them to. Because the patriarchy made you so ashamed, stripped away the joy of exploring your own body and pleasure. Being confident with your body and your sexuality was deplorable. Because how else could men get what they want from you when they want it? It is so fucked up that we have been taught to feel this way, but it is our job to unlearn it. There are conversations that could be had about SW. Exploitation, safety for all, decriminalization, censorship. Bro, those nails. It is so hard to take her serious when it looks like she has dried, crusted bubblegum on her nails. Fired. <laughs> it's like, what is that? Can you even write? <laughs> Can you type on a keyboard? Shit, but no one's talking about that on these podcasts. They just want to such shame and tell themselves that they're in a higher tier of society. They are. They are in a higher tier of society. Ethics and morals, having those is a big deal. Some broken moral compass decided by some of the worst people on earth. There was no demand. How would they be making money? Your anger. I mean, there's a lot of simps. There are a lot of simps. I, I just love to hear a woman make a lot of sense. <laughs> uh, let's hop into the Reddit. Good Lord. These women will do the entire mental gymnastics um, just to try to make it all make sense. All right, this one's also from, this one's from Beautiful Disaster. Shout out to you guys getting in the Reddit. 81 members. Nice. Uh, this is from Beautiful Disaster. Let's check it out. Here, I'm just going to move on. <laughs> okay. uh, what about you? Uh, I'm Morgan. I'm 28. I am from the Bay Area. I am in bartending and recently joined the Lash community, so Lash teching. Bro, I know some. I know. I knew a chick that worked in a bar. She was a bartender. I knew a chick that worked at um, a dispensary. She was a bud tender. And then I also knew a chick who worked on a chicken farm. She was a chicken tender. <laughs> Horrible joke. And ex only fans oh Ooh. did not know that you could tell by the neck tat probably that, um okay x she's a runner she's a track star right? was it what kind of content were you making on OF? solo okay you never did bg content no. okay and just to give credit where credit is due i will say your podcast did help solidify that decision oh, oh. Nice. Oh, look at that. Nice. Right. I was already like getting out of it, but after coming into Thank contact you. with the Thank podcast, you. it definitely You're welcome. solidified that. Is so that. Cool. You're welcome. How That's long so cool. did you do it for? I'm, I'm doing, you know, um, it, it was really on and off, but I'd say I would do it sporadically for months at a time, and then I'd kind of get sick of it. Uh, on and off for about two years. Okay. Damn, that's a long time. Maddie, what about you? My name is Madison. How are you? Um, I'm in a relationship with mm -hmm. my boyfriend. His name is Will. We've been together for four years. Nice. Um, and that's my longest relationship that I've been. So. How did you guys meet? Um, well, I used to date his best friend. <laughs> she's a runner. She's a track star. Bro, you can ne look at even the girls' faces. They're like, God, you can never date a girl that was dating one of your homeboys or cheated on cheated on her man to get with you. You're up next, bro. A long time ago, when I was in high school. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, I dated his friend, and we broke up. Um, him and I stayed in contact for about three years, and then um, I think at a certain point, we kind of got a crush on each other. And he actually went the right route. He spoke to him before anything happened, and he got his blessing. So. Hmm. Got yeah. his blessing like this dude's his daddy or her daddy. <laughs> Sir, do you mind if I would date your daughter? <laughs> This is so messy. This is so messy. Like, imagine kicking it with your boy and knowing that he's been in her guts and you've been in her guts. Bro, go find your own chick. Yeah. But okay. he was an asshole, so honestly, it's the, fine. The ex. Of course. The ex. He was a yeah. complete asshole. He still is, so. What would have happened if he didn't get his blessing? I was just thinking that. <laughs> I don't think we would have continued. I mean, oh. it would really? He was an asshole, but you respected him so much that you waited for his blessing? Stupid. Huh? What? Yeah, we would have stopped right there. Yeah. Hmm. Are they still friends? So, gents, I know I'm pausing it a lot, but like you got to take this context. <laughs> he was an asshole, but she respected his his um, his thoughts on the relationship. 
He was an asshole, but she respected him. This is crazy work. No. The two guys? No, they're no. not. But it is... Uh, were they best friends or just friends? They were best friends. But they did <sighs> like grow in completely opposite directions. I think that... Wait, question. Did they stop being friends after you got with the uh, yeah. new guy? Oh. Your first boyfriend? <laughs> yes. Huh. <laughs> Women, look at her smile on her face. Happily ruined a friendship. Bro, never... This is why I say bros over hoes, man. Do not pick a girl over a best friend. I could never imagine, dude. It could just be well, a coincidence. Listen. Okay, so <laughs> when Horrible. he um, told him about, like, I think I like Nicole or whatever, like, would you mind if I, you know, pursued that? He actually said, dude... If you guys get married, I'll be the best man at your wedding. I don't even care. And I'm actually no. glad you said that because <laughs> I actually hooked up with this girl that you were seeing. And so I'm glad, like, he put that on the table. So. <sighs> Brutal. He wasn't a Damn. really good friend. He grew in a completely different direction. So I don't think they would have been friends regardless. At least huh. I hope not because my boyfriend, like, grew into this amazing person. And I think that he's... Um, Will is so great. He's grown a lot since we've been together. And I don't think that that relationship she got a long neck Shots fired! would be compatible anymore like that friendship hmm. yikes 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 bro never date a chick that dated your boy ever yep Oof, absolutely brutal shout out to beautiful disaster maybe we have time for some of these are a little bit long if me and you both made only fans and i wasn't uh, i think we've seen this one two days ago yeah Man, I really do appreciate it. Thanks for jumping in the, the Reddit. It's just reddit.com slash r slash Levi Nix. It's also in the description. Uh, don't forget to cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality Makes You Irresistible to Women and Respected by Men. I hope you guys had a good time today. Loki, did you have a good time? Did you? Seems like he did. Um, I really appreciate you guys, man. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.